Hey, welcome and thanks for tuning in and listening on your favorite podcast listening app. Carm Capriato here, the Aftermarket Podcast Guy. Hey, welcome to 20 Questions in About 30 Minutes with shop owner Mike Tadich from TMT, Complete Auto Service Center. This unique format offers great thoughts and personal views that will allow you to compare what your answers are to Mike's. Learn that Mike's mentors were his closest friends and learn what lessons he got from his grandpa. Hey, before we jump into this remarkable content, I want to share with you why a lot of shop owners are choosing shopware. How's your search for more customers going? Is it really helping you or is it derailing your business? Shopware's leading shop management system is helping shops just like yours generate more profit per ticket with less time on the phone. Break away from your legacy system and implement a completely contactless workflow today. Get started at GetShopware.com slash CARM. Hey, now for all the right reasons, we're not going to be face-to-face at Apex. Yet Apex 2020 is going to be a virtual experience, which has defined this year for so many of us. It is still happening and starting November 3rd, and there's going to be a strong focus on meeting the needs of the service and repair community. Details, they're going to be ready soon. Keep an eye out for it. There's more information on the web at aapexshow.com slash FAQS. Hey, I need four minutes of your time, just four. I've got a survey that will help me help you. You know, we're five years in, consistently presenting podcasts each week, 800 plus episodes, 450 plus hours of content. How are we doing? Hey, go to remarkableresults.biz slash survey or find a link on my homepage. Give me a few minutes of your time or just reach out to me at Carm at RemarkableResults.biz. You know, I hear from so many every week, and I thank you. Mike Tadich is here. He's going to share with you how he re-energizes. I'm okay with laying all the cards out on the table and sharing it with friends and, you know, taking a taking a little bit of a beating, too, from them for, well, you know you should have did this or that, and, you know, and understanding and being okay with that. More with Mike Tadich in a minute. Now, did you know I write a blog and publish it to my email subscribers every Monday morning? I'd love you to become a subscriber to the email at remarkableresults.biz slash insider or find links on my website. Are you watching the live shop tour that we do each and every week? No? Whoa. Well, if you've missed any of the shop tours, you can find them at aftermarketweekly.com. Now, the show is live Tuesdays at noon Eastern time and is broadcast on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and so many other places, and also live on the website. Go to aftermarketweekly.com, where you can watch live and view all archived episodes. Don't miss one shop tour. You may get a great idea. Find the key talking points, Mike's bio, and links to his previous episodes at remarkableresults.biz slash E566. Hey, you need to know that I enjoy bringing you the podcast. I don't feel I work at all, even though I put a lot of hours in creating, writing, scheduling, editing, recording, researching, reading. I'll stop there. I hope you are as lucky as me. And don't work a day in your life. Hey, a warm welcome to Mike Tadich, TMT Complete Auto Service Center, Bremen, Indiana. Hello, Mike. How are you doing today, Carm? I'm great, man. Two stores, right? Two shops? Yes, sir. Technically, South Bend, Indiana, kind of. Bremen's our original store, and then Granger, and uh, the growth is around the south. So people probably know the South Bend uh, uh, mark on the map a little bit. They got that little university called Notre Dame in that city. So That's right. They do. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, my God. Notre Dame. John Maxwell, leadership certified coach. So, so happy to see that. Yes, sir. I love love John Maxwell. Uh, went through that program a couple of years ago now and uh, continue to use it uh, not only in our own businesses, but with uh, people we coach and teach and just work with. Glad to hear that. In fact, I did an episode with Mike on that whole leadership thing. So please look it up on the website. And you're also doing service advisor instruction with ShopFix Academy. Shop Fix Academy's uh, sister company, Sales Fix Academy, is the uh, service advisor training program. We worked, uh, gosh, a couple years to build that program uh, with Aaron and his team, and uh, I do teach that uh, along with a couple other people within that group, and it's been uh, been really exciting, really, really great to get that going and really have a, a really kick-butt uh, service advisor training program with them. Mike is here. 20 questions in 30 minutes. Uh, We've got a lot of great feedback from this format. So happy to continue to do this. uh, Who knows, maybe... 
twice a month. I'm not even sure how it's going to all roll out, but thanks for being here. Question number one for Mike Tadage. Get any great advice that you still follow today, Mike? Bunch of advice. I mean, I'm a I'm a big uh, one. So I, I'll start one off with the John Maxwell is a. Uh, and nothing beats the compound effect of consistency. So um, I'm still in the original building and the original marriage that we both started 36 years ago as we build those. But uh, we, are, we are maybe not the uh, rabbit of the group, but uh, we're certainly a, a, a slow, consistent turtle, let's say. And then uh, I like the success leaves clues. Um, I also like the failure leaves a lot of clues also. And it's uh, pretty important to pick up on, on both of those. Question two, ever had a mentor? Several mentors over the years. One of the first ones I remember, I, I was uh, I was one of six children. Uh, uh, my dad passed away pretty young. So when I started in a business, uh, I called on a, actually a, one of my best friends growing up. It was his grandfather that was a good uh, businessman in the area. And, and he decided uh, that he would kind of take me under his wing. And uh, I used to tell my staff that I'd pay this old guy to come out and chew my butt out about once a week. I'll tell you one quick story about that mentorship with him. I was complaining, probably 25, 26 years old, few years into the business, pointing the fingers at everybody. I, employees sucked. Customers are terrible. And my office was right next to the bathroom. And he says, stand up. And he was one of those guys that looked at you over the top of his glasses, you know, that would re- literally could burn a hole through you. So he said, get up. And he flipped the light on in the bathroom. And he said, see that man in the mirror? He said, until you realize that SOB is the only one that's causing all your problems and the only one that's going to be the is going to take you anywhere, you're not going to amount to anything. And he walked out the door and I was mad. Took me about a week to call him, called him back and he never said another word about it. He said he's ready to get back to work. Some of the best advice you could have ever gotten. Wow. Question three, Mike, what drives you? You know, I like the thrill of, of putting things together, building these businesses and doing things. We, we also have a self-storage business uh, that we've recently expanded. But I like the thrill of doing things differently. I, you know, was told maybe you can't put together the multi-concept or multi-faceted stores. Uh, putting that together with my son now, that, that's, that's a real thrill, a real drive for me to be successful and see if we, uh, how well we can uh, navigate that waters. Did you ever tell Tony to look in the mirror? Probably have, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you probably have had one of those uh, father-son conversations. <laughs> the latest book, Mike, that you read, any big takeaway from it? I've read a couple books recently. Generosity Factor is a great one that I've read. is uh, kind of a mythical story, probably kind of written on the uh, Truett Cathy uh, Chick-fil-A story. I love that one. Um, I'm in the middle of reading one with my wife, uh, King- Keys to the Kingdom by Alison Armstrong. It was a recent speaker that we had at one of our events. COVID Cows is a great one that I read, which is a Truett Cathy uh, Chick-fil-A story. I never loved reading books probably until the last 15 years, and Audible's been my friend for that. Thank you for that. And by the way, I want to tell the audience something. Uh, these aren't questions that are just the top of my mind. These aren't questions that come off of a stack, even though we played around with that concept a couple of couple of episodes ago. I submit to my guests about 60, maybe 60-some 60 questions, and they go through and pick. Oh, I'd love to answer that one. So these are right off of Mike's stack. Mike, question five, do you still have the fire that you have when you first started? I think even even more so, but in a different way. I mean, the youthful exuberance, I don't know that uh, that we can uh, grab that and pump it back into a 59-year-old chassis here, but I have passion in two ways, to grow what we currently have and then the passion to teach and share with other. Uh, I love being around young shop owners. Uh, I get the opportunity to spend a lot of time with young guys that are, including my 32-year-old son. You know, I, I love that side of it. So if I can share a few nuggets of, uh, of things that I tell them one thing right up front, I've made every mistake you can make so we can get those out of the way and I can help you grow your business from there. I'll bet you the the look on their face, the energy that you get back from them is is fuel for your fire. Very much so. And again, I just see the passion and being around those things in in the shop fix group and stuff. And I get to see these young owners really out to do things and reawoken my passion for our automotive industry and know that it's got a strong, strong future with uh, guys like this at the helm. 
Mike, just think if we didn't have peer groups, coaching groups, training groups, the web, where would we be as an industry? I've told these guys that. I said, man, we didn't have, you guys are so blessed to have these tools right at your hands. And we didn't, I didn't have that when we started in 1984. Um, it was, you know, just kind of figure it out for yourself. And then the knowledge of these things called smartphones, uh, right in, in the palm of your hand with all this information, man, I, I just, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's exciting. Talk about being a walking encyclopedia. <laughs> yes, sir. How does Mike Tadich re-energize? You know, Mike Tadich re-energizes with a couple different ways. Uh, we, we recently, my wife and I recently built a, a new home, and uh, we really kind of made it our, our little vacation home that I can come home to every evening. So that's a that's a great way to uh, re-energize. Uh, uh, fire, firing up that Harley Davidson every now and then and taking a ride is a uh, is a good little uh, good little re-energizer for me. A little a little thought clearer as well, and and taking some trips as well. Good for you. Any secrets to time suck? You know, just that we spend too much time on things we shouldn't. I try to plan out my day. So in the evening, I'll map out things that I need to do, or uh, I use my phone a lot and use a calendar. So I'll always have six, eight, 10 things that I know I need to accomplish. So using that and, and really, you know, putting as those in a fundamental order, usually tackling the uh, least, uh, least one of those topics first and getting that out of the way um, is always, always the best thing for me. But yeah, managing it through a calendar and, and my phone is, is the best way to get away from time. Time suck. Thank you. A big secret to building a strong relationship with your customers. For us, it's always been a customer service experience. I mean, too many people get hung up on, you know, the break job, the tune up, whatever. Although that's very important, that's expected. Man, how you can make them feel, how, how you know, car wash, how you can take this negative situation of a, of a, of a car that needs repair and make it a positive. Uh, that, that's really what we work on and really focus on in our shops. Any great car count ideas you could offer? We're in two different markets. We're in a real rural area in the original store, so that's always been a problem. I mean, we're you really have to work that. So I think that probably the biggest thing I learned from that, we had to maximize each and every opportunity because we didn't have 500 cars. Um, if you didn't hit on most of the cars today, you weren't going to have a good day. So I think the small store, the small set really taught me a lot of valuable lessons and we, we uh, maximize opportunities. Did you own your town? hundred percent still do. So, <laughs> Hey, Carm here and coming up, Mike Tadich will share with you the top three things you need to have when opening a shop or even your second or third. Hey, today's pandemic is causing so much stress and uncertainty for everyone right now especially shop owners. Now, how do I make sure that my staff and my customers stay protected while still moving cars through the bays? Contactless service is our new normal, and having a shop management system that not only supports this, but actually helps your business thrive through it all is key. Shopware's digital workflow with remote pay will provide that solution for you. Amy Matnett from Auto Craftsman recently commented on social media, and I quote, I can't even express how grateful I am that I jumped on board with Shopware on January 1st. Would have never guessed that I would be the only one writing service at my shop as I haven't worked in the shop for the last 15 years. But she goes on and says, I'm running my shop nonstop every day with Shopware to help me not only get the job done easier and faster, but am totally wowing my customers. End quote. Hey, if you want to wow your customers too, request a demo at GetShopware.com. Hey, Carm here for Apex. Now, for all the right reasons, we're not going to be face-to-face at Apex. Yet Apex 2020 is going full speed ahead to be a virtual experience. I'm really excited to participate in the virtual event because Apex will pull together some of the best and brightest training in this new unprecedented virtual experience. It's still happening the week of November 3rd, the same week Apex was to take place. Virtual Apex will still have a big focus and commitment to the service repair community. Look for training and the chance to interact with the aftermarket community. See new product intros and more during this extraordinary event. Details will be ready for you on August 19th. There's also more information coming on the website at aapexshow.com slash faqs. Name something, Mike, that you tried that didn't work. 
there was a thing I got a great idea that I was going to expand. I had some extra retail room in my shop. So I was going to, I bought a Radio Shack franchise and put this Radio Shack franchise and I was going to cross merchandise them. So I thought, gosh, 20, 30 people, 40 people a day go in this Radio Shack. I'll turn them into automotive clients. This will be a slam dunk. I'm the, I'm the smartest marketing guy in the world. And it was a train wreck. And I'll remember one quick thing. We were standing in the store when it was closed on a weekend and Tony, my partner now that was probably 12 years old, Old, I'm saying out loud, I can't understand why my automotive business is dropped off. I just can't understand that. And he looked up at me and he said, Dad, it don't look like an automotive shop. And he nailed it. We lost all identity of what we were, automotive guys. And once I sold that off, people started flocking back in. I didn't know you did, Bubba. It's like, that's all I ever did. And this was uh, 15, 14 years into being in the automotive business, I lost identity that quickly. So it taught me we're automotive repair guys only. We don't we don't get too far out of that lane. Um, and it taught me to really focus to stay in my lane. Would your organization crumble if you stepped aside? Not today. <laughs> not today because you got Tony. <laughs> well, not just Tony too. I mean, I had a couple a couple of good automotive friends that had had health issues, and one actually passed away. And it taught me to start on a con- on a succession plan, on a vision plan, five years early versus five years late. So about the time I was getting close to fifty, um, I wasn't ready to do anything. But it taught me to get on this vision plan early. So and to grow this past. The, this in multiple shops, there's got to be way people past, past my son. So we, we're, we've developed and are developing a gr- really great team that will s- continue to sustain. And that's really what I do. That's my daily, daily uh, role in our companies now is, is develop people. That's such a great answer. You had the vision or actually uh, maybe it wasn't a scare, but your, your eyes got open to the fact that you needed a succession plan. There's so many family businesses out there. And they're not communicating about it. Dad just thinks son or daughter is going to take over and they never talk about it. And then it's too late to even develop, as you say, the people and the processes, the coaching that's necessary to lead into the second or third generation. So very apropos. Thanks for that. Uh, Mike, the top three most important needs to open a shop. I would say the top three most important needs are people, people, and people you can't do without a team uh in in so many uh this fallacy that you know i can do it all i can sell service i can work on cars i can do this or that it it just isn't there i could open 10 shops tomorrow with the right staff but developing staff developing culture i guess would be a good it isn't just people it goes way past that but it it has to start with the right people the culture you know it's okay that one of the things we like to tell our customers is hey i want to let you know we do business a little different here and this is why we don't have to be 10 minute quick lube guys we don't have to do the brake job like the you know billy bob down the street Uh, we 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 bring to our uh, niche a very unique way a very positive way and i I think that's the important side of what we try to do in our businesses thanks mike i've always said that processes and great systems win wars what's the most recent update to your processes and systems getting close to two years with the second shop now so one of the things understanding is how to manage those and really the thing that we've been working on the most this year is is the bookkeeping the accounting side of the business the boring side (laughs) Um, but you know how that process works and how we how we mirror the images reading the uh, uh, Truett Cathy Chick-fil-A books and understanding, you know, how a Chick-fil-A runs so successfully because of the way their processes, why they have happy people and great experiences and, and how that whole thing works. Uh, that That's really been the thing. So bookkeeping side, but that, that whole experience side, you know, based on somebody like somebody successfully did it like true Kathy. And that didn't come overnight. I mean, that was probably 30 years in the making to get to the, you know, multiple stores that they got to and gosh, where they're at now. Going from two shops to three, are you going to have your processes more and better dialed in? 
hundred percent. We're uh, on the cusp of number three as we speak, um, and, it, and it's really you know procedures and processes. And I think we have a better understanding of how to open that. Um, this one will probably be a not taking over an existing store, and I think we have the processes in place to to be able to do that. So picking the right uh, the right area, and uh, there's some great opportunities out there right now with so many strip mall plazas and everything that are dark, um, and you can get into some places that. We weren't. We didn't used to be able to get into, and we're on the cusp of doing that uh, as we speak. Hey, are you paperless? We are about ninety percent, ninety five percent. We went with uh, with a uh, digital DVI bolt on inspections with our with our Mitchell system uh, several years ago. Uh, we got rid of paper repair orders, so everything within the shop is handled. Uh, technician notes are handled uh, all electronically, so it's all tracked that way. About the only thing we still actually produce, uh, uh, we still print a paper repair order. And it's funny you ask that. We just got done talking about that. We don't really think because especially during the current goings on that we really have to do that anymore. We can email and text and do whatever with the uh, invoice and stuff. So that's one of the old things we've hung on to, but I think that's about to disappear as well. Good for you. Now here's question 15 and you did hint on this just a moment ago. How is consolidation in the industry going to impact you? Consolidation is going to be awesome for the people that want to move forward and grow their businesses. And what I mean by that, I think, you know, I don't know what the current stat is, but I think the average shop owners, it's uh, in his early 60s. You know, I think for the shops that are going to keep up with the goings on and, and invest in equipment and training programs, we have a big, great training program within our shops. I think they're going to really be hugely successful. You're going to see a lot of growth with that. You saw car dealers go from, you know, 28,000 to 22,000 or whatever. You didn't, you don't see a Chevy and Ford store in every small town in America anymore. And the same things happen into our industry. And the ones that are going to come on a successful side of that are really going to be, um, it's, a, it's a big win for us. Excellent. Mike, did you ever make a major pivot in your business? And if yes, what was it? I think the major pivot in my business was was getting out of the day to day operations side of that um, to to really start turning over and understanding. Yes, people could do it like me better than me. Um, those those types of things. Um, I, I think that's the major pivot. That pivot's been in the last five years. We had a store manager that was off for a couple of days this week. I would have been in that store a couple of years ago. I'm I'm not in that store. We we build and work with teams that take over and do a good job while somebody else is out. And I think that's the biggest major pivot of me is pivoting from a owner operator to an owner investor. Yes, the CEO. Hey, if you could send a message to yourself 10 years ago, what would you tell the younger you? I think even if I'd go back even a little further than that, I would say I would have read more. I would have gotten around more people in the last 10 years. I've done a pretty good job with that. But I think really getting with other shop owners, getting in, in a, you know, successful, you know, automotive groups and just surrounding yourself. There's not a day, there's not a, probably a few hours in a day that goes by that I don't have a text or an email or a phone call with another shop owner. And I think opening that up, uh, has just allowed us to grow and, and really understand. And probably even 10 years ago is honestly sharing when stuff isn't so right. So when we opened our second store, we had some issues primarily with the first store. And it, I'm okay with laying all the cards out on the table and sharing it with friends and, you know, taking a, taking a little bit of a beating too from them for, well, you know, you should have did this or that. And, you know, and understanding and being okay with that. You said uh, networking, talking to uh, other shop owners. How about the local group? Uh, are you close? Do you have a network in your region? I've tried many times. We've been in, you know, like Napa Auto Groups and, and everything. I've, I've struggled with that, that we've not found a niche in our local area. So I have a great niche of automotive friends nationally, but honestly not locally. I have not found that. It seems that getting out, in groups that we're in and getting people that think like we do and are really want to be successful and act differently and behave differently and grow their shops differently. I haven't found that on a local level much at all. Thanks for that. Uh, question 19, if you could pick up a new skill in an instant, what would it be? 
a new skill in an instant. I would say just getting better at my people skills and growing the people um, within our teams. Um, I, I'm working on being a lot better at that. So um, I had a uh, professional drag race, uh, a top fuel drag racing friend of mine, a good personal friend of mine. And he talked about, he said, I just don't have two years to develop this guy that take care of the clutches or the heads or whatever on his car. I take a guy out of train, uh, tech school and I need to get him up to speed in 90 days. And he told me the whole philosophy about how he, you know, does that. And I think the same thing with us. I, I, although it takes a long time to grow a good technician, I think there's plenty of ways that we can speed up that process and get them up to speed. And one of it is not standing in a way and holding them back. Is part of it, though, outlining a career path or at least the tasks or the learning that they have to go through so that, you know, you could say, well, hopefully he's learned this stuff in the next nine months. You expected it to happen through osmosis. You wanted to get lucky. But I think what you're saying is you, you actually have to plan it out. I'm so surprised about this. And you hit a really good point because I've talked a lot with my teams currently. They have no vision. So you come from a uh, passion where you have a vision and where you want to go with your shops and stuff. But a lot of the people that work for you don't. And I, we set out five-year vision plans with with everybody on our teams now and really map that out. I mean, I had a guy the other day that, you know, wants to retire in five years, but there's no plan for that. It's just a, it's just a dream. So, you know, helping and understanding that is is huge. So I think, I think yes, I've got a 21-year-old that will manage, will f- completely manage one of our stores within six months. And just getting the belief system in him that he can do that is exciting. When in your life... Have you been so passionately focused on an activity that you lost track of time, what you were really doing? That happens pretty regularly. So, <laughs> so um, building the, the sales fix service advisor training program. is Time just flew right by, huh? Well, yeah, it is, it is. I mean, it took a long time to build it, don't get me wrong, but put all those things together. And I, and I think I can get pretty wrapped up uh, working in, in managing and coaching and guiding shop owners and people in my shops is I I can lose track of time really quickly uh, with that because it's just um, I have a lot of positivity and a lot of energy for for that side of our businesses. Well, yeah, I so can relate to that boundless energy. I mean, that, that's what happens to me. I mean, I produce how many episodes and a couple of live shows a week and and I'm in the deep end of the pool almost every single day. And I don't even think I've ever worked a day in my life as a podcaster. So I, I get that. It just and, and all of a sudden you look up and she says, hey, aren't you going to have dinner? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Whatever your political affiliation, that matters now. But George Bush Jr. said about George Bush Sr. when he passed away, he's either full throttle or asleep. And I think that's probably the way you run. Me and, and you, I, me and you, Mike. I absolutely. F, uh, I'm going to call myself FT from now on. Yeah, full throttle. <laughs> I'm full throttle. Okay. There you go. Last question out of our 20 in 30. Your favorite vacation spot, Mike? My favorite vacation spot, and I've only got to go once and we'll return, would be Maui, Hawaii. Um, just a beautiful place. My wife and I got to go, uh, I think, on our 25th anniversary around there. And uh, we went, honestly, when it business, I think that was around the 06, 07, 06 uh, recession, depression, whatever we want to call it. So it was money was a little tight. It was an incentive trip. But yeah, that, that would be a beautiful place. I just, I don't think I've seen a more picturesque, you know, part of the country. So it's just beautiful. Uh, my wife, I took her there in 83 and she said, if you ever take me back, I'm not coming home. <laughs> so, so you haven't gone, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't blame her. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, these were, this was great. 20 questions, 30 minutes. Mike Tadich from TMT Complete Auto Service in Bremen, Indiana and South Bend, right? South Bend, Indiana as well. Yes, sir. And more to come as one day we'll, we'll find out. Yes, sir. There will be. Thanks so much for being here, Mike. Thank you very much, Carmen. I appreciate it a lot. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time.